Now it's difficult to quantify those things, but I would say that the standing of string theory has waned considerably since the early 2000s. To the point where many physicists would consider it a failure now. In the 80s and 90s, the common perception was that string theory was going to be an actual theory of everything in just a few years or so. It would successfully unify gravity and quantum theory and physics would be solved. Yeah, it, it has failed that. In the previous video about string theory, I tried to answer what string theory is and gave a historical overview over the phases it went through. I highly recommend you watch this as it will give you valuable context for this discussion here. This discussion here being, has string theory failed? The biggest criticism leveled at string theory is that it isn't even physics or science for that matter. My take is that it's a mathematical framework that's aspiring to apply to reality eventually. A kind of proto-physics, if you will. And I don't say that to disparage the great mathematical work done by string theorists. Ed Witten even won a Fields Medal for it, the most prestigious award in mathematics. But isn't it telling that string theory has won a Fields Medal, but there is no realistic scenario in which it can win a Nobel Prize in the foreseeable future at least? Physics, and uh, science in general, is firmly built on the interplay between theory and experiment. Theory explains experimental findings and experiment checks theoretical predictions. That is the cornerstone of the scientific method. So it seems obvious that you cannot do physics without both these components. You could read string theory as an attempt to get a working model of physics without experiment, with just theory alone. Um, not because this was considered a great idea, but because there simply was no choice. The energy scale predicted by string theory was, and still is, simply inaccessible. With current technology, it would take a particle collider roughly the size of the solar system to reach the energies required. Or um, another Big Bang. Why even pursue a theory like that in the first place? Because in the 80s and 90s, it looked as if string theory was mathematically so tightly constrained that it would allow for only a single solution. It looked as if there was only a single unique way for the universe to exist. And that would have been a pretty strong case for a theory. This dream was shattered though with the landscape result of the late 90s, where it was discovered that string theory doesn't predict one unique universe, but rather an infinite number of possible universes. But even if that hadn't happened, theory alone can never be proof. Only experimental evidence is proof. Theory alone is always insufficient, and um, I, I say that as a theoretical physicist. As far as evidence for string theory goes, nothing beats Conlon's book. Yeah, this, this is top shelf. I have nothing to improve on this. This classic XKCD comic sheds light on the second big shortcoming of string theory. It doesn't really make predictions. It's not that string theory makes uh, no predictions at all, just no useful quantitative predictions. For example, it does predict the existence of a lot of new particles, the supersymmetric partners of all known particles. But it cannot predict their masses. In fact, any predictions in this matter are not derived from facts of nature that we know, but from things that we would like to be true. Thus, 
predictions. Now, uncertain predictions are not unheard of in physics. For example, quantum field theory also was unclear about the mass of the Higgs boson before the LHC experiments. But uh, theorists could at least give a probable range of between 130 and 230 GeV. It turned out to be more like 125. So the situations are not comparable. Likewise, string theory predicts a lot of extra dimensions, which are mostly unobservable. Because, like, we can't see any of them. String theorists imply that this may have some observable effects, but cannot state which. So does string theory make predictions in any useful sense? Well, certainly not yet. Maybe someday. The landscape result has transformed the theory of everything into a theory of anything. It doesn't predict our universe anymore, it predicts any possible universe. This has in turn led to speculations of a multiverse, where every conceivable universe is realized in some way or another. What does that mean for our observable universe? Don't know. That's not necessarily wrong, but it's useless. Uh, the two points discussed so far have basically been just complaining that string theory isn't a complete theory yet, which, which is fine. But now we're getting to the points that are the real problem. The first is that string theory seems to be unfalsifiable, meaning there seems to be no way to disprove it. Because whenever something inopportune is discovered, the goalpost gets moved a bit. String theory has had a lot of discouraging results over the decades, like predicting extra dimensions, predicting twice the number of particles we can observe, having five different versions of string theory, and finally the landscape. For each setback, a carefully constructed solution has been found. But that has also moved string theory further and further away from the universe that we can actually observe. That still doesn't mean it's wrong, it just makes string theory less and less plausible and also less and less appealing. Eventually, you arrive at things like the anthropic principle, where you declare that the universe is the way it is because it has to be the way it is. And you actually call this an explanation. The most telling example of this was the mass of supersymmetric partner particles. In 2000, the prediction, prediction was 250 GeV, which was supposed to be reached in a few years at the Tevatron. As that didn't happen, the predicted value went up to 600 and was supposed to be found at the LHC, which was then ruled out in 2011. This meant that the prediction, prediction was further moved up to 1000 etc, etc, etc. There have been numerous bets and predictions predictions that superpartners would surely be found at the LHC. Well, the LHC has not found any trace of supersymmetry to this day. The cool thing about supersymmetry was that it was a potential solution to a lot of problems, um, including dark matter, by the way. But for that to work, the lightest superpartner needs to be on a comparable mass to the heaviest standard model particle. The more you move away from that, the less useful supersymmetry becomes. The solution stops being a solution. So the LHC has more or less killed supersymmetry by not finding it. And admittedly, that was a big blow to string theory in the physics community but not everybody was willing to admit defeat. String theory had a lot of promise in the 80s and 90s, and it was perfectly reasonable to jump on the string bandwagon back then. That's true, but it's also true that this is no longer the case, and it's dishonest to pretend otherwise.
And finally, my main point of contention, how string theory was communicated, especially to the public. The first and second superstring revolutions created an atmosphere of exuberance and overconfidence. String theorists were convinced they were on the right track, and uh, finding the missing pieces was just a matter of time. Surely the theory of everything was within reach. This mindset spawned a number of popular science books, most notably by Stephen Hawking, Michio Kaku, Brian Greene and others. A Brief History of Time wasn't just about string theory, it was more about cosmology and black holes, but it was the first popular account of it. Also, this book sold over 25 million copies since its publication in 1988 and established a market for popular science accounts of speculative physics. Hawking then doubled down on string theory, M-theory, brains, etc. in his next book, The Universe in a Nutshell. And all of this is fine per se, but the big problem that I have is they way undersold how speculative and hypothetical string theory really is. Most books put it in a direct line from quantum theory and relativity and treat it as if it were the next logical step as a matter of course. And if you write an entire book about extra dimensions, you may very well preface it with a disclaimer, but that's not the message that will stick with a lay audience. Within academia, um, competing theories were derided or talked down and string theory was portrayed to be the only game in town. Case in point, M-theory. M-theory is not a theory. It's the conjecture that an overarching theory exists and this theory has all the different versions of string theory as limiting cases. Because some connections between some of those have been found. Basing such grandiose ideas on rather limited results, reminds me of a story from the 1950s. Um, uh, Werner Heisenberg and Wolfgang Pauli had collaborated on a theory on elementary particles. After some modest initial progress, Heisenberg had publicly announced that the theory was now well underway and only some technical details were missing. Pauli's answer to this was legendary. He drew an empty rectangle and noted this is to show the world that I can paint like Tizian. Only technical details are missing. That's M-theory in a nutshell. Right, so is string theory a failure? Well, again, most criticisms of string theory just boil down to the theory not quite being there yet. And uh, that's, that's fine. I have no issue with that. But the real and serious sin committed by string theory is how brazenly it was oversold, especially to the public. How string theorists constantly confuse what they hope string theory could one day achieve with what it has actually achieved so far. And everybody looks at the different axes on which you might evaluate the subject. Everybody should. Everybody should make up their own mind. But I'm giving it an A+. Plus. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be working on it. <laughs> and, and There were completely overblown promises and predictions that never materialized. And this has harmed the public perception of physics and science as a whole. There are theorists out there who will go to their graves as true believers of supersymmetry, regardless of what the evidence might be. And that's a problem. Even if we take the position that string theory is a failure, that does not mean that it's wrong. In fact, I think it's highly likely that some of the math developed for string theory will have some future application for physics. But I think it has become perfectly clear that you cannot do just theory without experiments. At least you cannot get any physics out of that. So speculating about physics that is inaccessible to us experimentally may be interesting, but it will simply not get us anywhere. 